because mm-hmm. we become anxious when we we don't think that we first of all we're not sure about the results we don't feel like we're in control that's where anxiety comes from right sure and deuteronomy 3 yeah, because this says, is going to go badly and i can't yeah. do anything about it i can't yeah. do anything about it so become anxious right. or i'm not quite sure how it's going to go right right and I, and but I'm it could worried go about it it it's could right. go badly and I'm, and so i'm anxious yeah Deuteronomy 3, 24, O Lord, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? The Bible is always comparing God, Mm -hmm. always, to help the human mind somehow wrap our minds around just yeah. how powerful he is, right? Yeah. Who can who can hold the the expanse of the universe, not the world, the expanse of the universe in their hands? Right. God. He he hung he hung the stars in the heavens like we hang curtains, and he knows the stars by name. He's numbered them. He all. knows yeah, them by like, name. He knows every single like, hair on every right. single head of every single human that right. has ever existed. And right. yet he has not no, forgotten. No your sparrow name. falls from the sky without without God willing it to happen. It's uh, huh? That's right. That, so know, anyway. what's complicated about this section in Peter, it's not just a general submission under under God's hand, but it's a circumstantial, situational, because he's saying, in the midst of your suffering, some of your loved ones are dying. And man, it's, it's hard to read this, but Peter says, why are you surprised at the fiery trials that you face? Yeah, yeah. that's and chapter Justin, four. Yeah. That's right. And that's, that's complicated to hear because we've been sold the bill that successful, obedient Christians don't suffer. Or even if we do suffer, you're going to be so daggum spiritually strong that you just live above it all. <laughs> right? right. Like it, it won't, but basically like you're not going to feel it. That's you're, right. you're either not going to experience it or you're not going to feel it. You know? That's right. But I so, love those. I love that language, that verse, man. Don't be surprised when fiery trials come upon you as though something strange were happening to you. It's really good. Like this is common to to all of your brothers and sisters, you know. That's right. Around the Peter world at uses, all times. Yeah. Peter uses another way of like describing this humility in chapter four. It's four nineteen. He says it this way. Therefore, what's the therefore? Therefore, therefore, uh, let those who suffer according to God's will. That's another way of saying under the mighty hand of God. Let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls Mm -hmm. to a faithful creator while doing good. This is another way of saying, all right, this is not how I would do this. This is not how I would go about it, but I'm going to entrust my soul, not not just my body, (laughs) my soul to the God who is fulfilling his will. So this is hard to say because I don't like it at times, but it is God's will Mm. that we labor and suffer as we advance his kingdom amongst evil, wicked people. And Justin, in our country, I think it's going to become more suffering. And this verse is going to become more important, uh, more valuable, I should say, to us, reminding ourselves that there isn't something wrong. There's some. There's something that's out of place. No, but I know this goes against a lot of Christian nationalism. And well, I was going to say, John, you realize that if, <laughs> if the church would have been faithful, and if we would just be faithful, then we would never have to suffer for doing good. Yeah, you realize that, right? Yep. I'm kidding, of course. I'm no, being. Facetious. I know. I'm with you. But that's what uh, people tell us. I hey, know. Again, this is yet again that th- it's like, oh well, you know, if we would just be faithful, then we would never suffer for doing good because everybody would just celebrate good because everybody would love good. Yeah. And I just don't think that's true. All right, that's not the purpose of this podcast. Keep going. No. First Peter 3, 14. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. Now that bless, that blessedness is our faith, our encouragement, right? It, it, there is a temporary and a eternal, but our blessedness is re- reminding ourselves that the favor of God is upon us. Like as we continue to suffer in this, reminding ourselves God's love and favor is upon us. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do with gentleness and respect. Justin, the reason why we struggle with that verse is that we're too anxious trying to control our circumstances and control of the outcome that we forget why we're suffering. We're suffering. God has us in a place of suffering because it's in those moments that we can share the hope that we have with the people who are persecuting us, which is very, very different than how we're hearing 
I don't know. Modern Christianity and the political atmosphere right now. <laughs>